I know what I'm going to do now. Uh-huh. Really? All of this with a low salary? Sure. Why not? Retiring a millionaire on a low salary sounds like a contradiction, right? But still, it's possible and if you use the right strategy, almost mathematically inevitable to retire with millions of dollars in the bank, even if you work on a low salary. To do this, you just need to follow some simple steps that many people before you applied successfully. One of them was the famous Ronald Reed, that you might have heard about. As a kid, Ronald grew up on a poor farm and after high school, he worked as a janitor for minimum wage for most of his life. But still, after dying in June 2014 at the age of 92, Ronald became famous because of a secret he hid from everyone, including his own family. They found out he was able to amass a $8 million fortune, and all of this from a janitor job that, in the 2000s, made only about $22,000 a year. And since I know how he did it, I want to give you a blueprint that you can follow, that I'm also following, that is almost mathematically guaranteed to make you a millionaire before retirement. All you need is a little patience, discipline, and a small Google table that I created for you. That, of course, I'm going to make available to you for free. The only thing that I ask in return is please be so kind to drop a like to this video to help me out. Your help means the world to me, so thank you so much in advance. Now, I guess there are many questions open, so let's not waste any more time and let's start with the part one of this blueprint, the cash flow. The most important thing that nobody ever teaches at school and that all people that were able to amass fortunes knew is the wealth formula. This formula simply states that the money you have coming in minus the money you spend, income minus expenses, equals your cash flow. If you have a negative cash flow, then you're falling into debt. And believe it or not, this is much more important than how much money you make. Because you've probably heard of boxers like Mike Tyson, that at the peak of his powers was earning approximately 30 millions per fight. And still, he had to file for bankruptcy in 2003, having squandered the money due to reckless spending. Now, no matter how much income Tyson was making, he was spending more than that. So in a financial sense, he wasn't wealthy. In fact, in the book The Psychology of Money, Morgan Housel writes that true wealth is actually the money that you have not spent. The good thing is that even just a small amount saved changes your financial future dramatically. But still, the average American spends nearly $18,000 every year on unessential costs. So the question is, do you really need to spend so much money on Amazon and restaurants every month? Okay. Part two is automate. Now tell me the truth. How many times you said to yourself, oh man, I really need to start saving. You know what? This month I'm gonna save $100 from my paycheck. And then when the paycheck comes, you either forget that you said you wanted to save in the first place, or you procrastinate and tell yourself that you can start saving next month and you get back to Amazon Prime to find the next thing to buy. So what I found to be a great way to avoid this spending problem and works great with me and my wife is to automate money transfers. What I do is I automatically deposit my paychecks into my checking account. And each month I automatically transfer the amount I want to save into a savings account or my investment brokerage account. This way I protect the money from being spent and I know that only the money that's left in my spending account can be used for my fixed expenses and my wants. And in the same way I automate my investments so that the money gets invested right away and starts working for me 24 seven. Now it's even become really really easy to automate your transfers and you can do it in a way that the money is transferred like one day after you get your paycheck. This way you kind of bypass the psychological barrier of spending money when you have it because it all happens in the background and you have no control over it. Automating means basically forgetting that you ever had the money in the first place so you're not gonna miss it because it's easier to give up on buying something if you don't have the money at all. And in the background even if you don't think about it this money that this automated process is taking from your paycheck every Every month is slowly growing and building your wealth without you even knowing it. Part three of this blueprint is determining how much you need to save. 
Now, later in this video, I'm gonna show you how to use the tool that I created and then I'll make available to you. But for now, let me show you a breakdown that I laid down that shows the amount that you need to save every month depending on your current age. So for example, if you are 20 years old now, you just need to save $78 per month until retirement to be able to retire a millionaire. Assuming you'll do with the money, what I'll tell you later in this video. What you can notice right away is that you actually don't need so much money to save in order to retire a millionaire. And the younger you are, the easier it's going to be. For example, if you're between 20 and 30 years old, you're gonna to have to save between 78 and $193 per month until the age of retirement in order to become a millionaire. Of course, assuming that the market is gonna keep growing as it did in the last 100 years. So now you're probably wondering, Rick, where do these numbers come from? Well, this is part four of the blueprint. But if I can ask you for a small favor, guys, if you still haven't done it, please be nice and support my channel with a like on this video. It's easy and free, but it helps my channel incredibly because right now it's still just struggling. So thank you so much. You are truly amazing. Thank you. Okay, part four of this blueprint is making your savings profitable. You didn't think we were leaving your savings in a bank account to die a slow death because of inflation, right? And in fact, Ronald Reed didn't become a millionaire just by putting money aside. Instead, he knew that investing your money in the stock market is the best and only way to become a millionaire on a low salary, but only if you do it in the right way. Don't worry, I got you covered. Suggestion number one is consider day trading like the plague. You probably know what day trading is. You see it every day on TikTok, Instagram, or YouTube. People analyzing charts, buying and selling 50 different times a day, hoping it goes up, but they never tell you that they all lose money and therefore they are desperately trying to sell you a course to earn something. 95% of day traders lose money. Ronald knew it, Buffett knows it, everybody should know it. So please, no day trading. But here's the good thing, it doesn't matter if you don't know much about the stock market. Actually, even if you don't even want to make the effort to know, the best way to achieve great returns in the long term is by investing in broadly diversified index funds or ETFs. ETFs are just a great invention and they allow the average investor to achieve great returns in the stock market even if he doesn't know much about it. This is because you don't have to actually pick stocks and buy individual stocks, but instead you buy a fund that contains many companies in a particular area or sector. And the best choice that you can make, according to many investors, including Buffett, is to invest in the so-called S&P 500, which is an index that includes 500 of the most important and biggest companies in the US economy. Now, let's get back to the table for a second, because I want to clarify where these numbers come from. This table is based on a 10% return if you save and invest every month in the S&P 500, for example, using a Vanguard S&P 500 ETF. The historical average return of the S&P 500 has been around 12% since its 1928 inception, through the end of 2021. And in the last 10 years, it even had a higher return of 13%. But since we wanna be conservative, I took 10% as an average return in the long term. Now, some people criticize that this calculation doesn't take into account inflation, and therefore, a million dollar when you're 67 is not worth like a million dollar now. Well, this is true. And in fact, if you wanna take inflation into account, you should take 8.5% instead of 10%, as Investopedia states. But in the same way, we didn't take also a positive thing into account, and that is that even your investing power grows over time. So say you are 25, and from the table you see that you should invest $129 every month. This amount has a certain value now, but in 20, 30 years, $129 is gonna be worth much less even for you. So in reality, you're gonna be able to invest more and more every year instead of staying by the same sum, and you're gonna get to much more than a million when you're 67. Now, as I promised, in the description below, you're gonna find a link to a Google table that I created that you can just duplicate and you can use to calculate the same values that I calculated and shown in this video. As you can see, you can insert here the initial capital that you have, assuming, for example, that you have $5,000 and you wanna invest them right away. But for the table I showed you before, I assume zero here. Then you enter the rate of return, the 10% that we said before, and in case you wanna consider inflation, you can use 8.5%. That is the average return adjusted for inflation using historical values. Then you add your current age and the age in which you want to achieve your financial goals. And finally, what is your financial goal? In our case, it was a million dollars. The result that this table gives you is the amount that you need to invest every month from now on to get to the final goal at the age of retirement that you set. And by scrolling down, you can even see how much your wealth is going to grow each year by investing that sum. Part six is let compounding take over. 
A legend narrates that centuries ago, a sage introduced the Emperor of India to the game of chess. And the Emperor was so impressed that he granted the sage any reward he wanted. The man humbly responded that he had a very simple wish. One grain of rice for the first square of the chessboard, two grains for the next square, four for the next, eight for the next, and so on, doubling all the way through the 64th square. The Emperor agreed, amazed that the man had asked for such a small reward, but this single promise led to the collapse of his entire dynasty. By the 30th square, the Emperor's debt had amounted to over 1 billion grains of rice, and by the time he reached the 64th square, he owed the old sage over 18 quintillion grains of rice, bankrupting the entire kingdom and making the humble man the richest man on earth. This is exactly what a good investor like Ronald Reed knew. He understood that the power of investing is not in guessing the right time to buy or to sell, but in letting compound interest take its course over the years. Invest your money in a safe and sound ETF like the S&P 500, and over the decades your money will compound to incredible sums. This is why Albert Einstein said compound interest is the eighth wonder of the world. And this is exactly how, according to the book The Psychology of Money, even Warren Buffett, which is considered the best investor of all time, and started investing at the age of 10, actually made 99% of his money after the age of 50. Yes, the magic of compounding. And by the way, you can see this compounding effect from the tool that I gave you, both as a list and as a graph. Now, what would you do if you invest for 10 years and then a huge crisis comes and suddenly everything you invested is worth half? You sell, obviously, to contain the losses. Well, not really. Throughout life, Ronald Reed witnessed 11 stock market crashes and bear markets, most of which saw the market crash for over 50%. And yet, he still held on to his investments because he knew that you can't time the market. And your best bet is to just continue investing for the long term, regardless if the market goes up or down. And if you think you can sell before a crash, even though great investors like Warren Buffett and Peter Lynch tell you they can't, check this out. The University of Michigan conducted a study that measured returns from 1963 to 2004 and found that 96% of the positive returns over that period came from just 0.85% of trading days. Coming to a similar conclusion, one of the top equity analysts in the world, Andrew Stotz, observed a 10-year period from November 2005 through October 2015 and concluded that if you missed the 10 best market days over the specified 10 years period, you would stand to lose on average 66% of the gains you would have captured by staying in the market. In other words, my friend, save as much as possible, invest consistently in solid index funds like the S&P 500, and automate the whole process so that you won't have the impulse to sell during market crashes. This is the magic secret to become a millionaire on a low salary. I really appreciate the fact that you watch this video till the end, and if I could help you in any way, please consider subscribing to my channel to support me and to see future videos like this. From Rick, the Italian guy who talks finance, I wish you a wonderful day, and as always, I'll see you in the next video. Ciao!